Okay, guys, in this section 6-3, we're going to be looking at parallelograms. Now, we begin this section by looking at and identifying all the different types of four-sided figures, and then that will set the stage for the rest of the unit, because from this point uh, forward, each one of the sections is going to focus on a certain four-sided polygon, right? So we want to go through and get the overview of all of them first, and then the second half of the lesson will go into poly uh, parallelograms specifically. All right. Now, so again, we're going to look at the list and kind of define all of the different four-sided uh, figures that we have. So the first one is called a quadrilateral. If it has four sides, it is a quadrilateral. That is the definition. All right, so a quadrilateral can look like this. It has four sides. The angles don't have to be any certain thing. The sides don't have to be any certain length. If it has four sides, it's a quadrilateral. The next one is parallelogram. In a parallelogram, the opposite sides are parallel. So in a parallelogram, the top and the bottom are parallel, and the left and the right are parallel. Okay, so now we're just identifying the different ones. We'll look at some of the characteristics and properties here as the sections move forward. The next one is a rectangle. So to be a rectangle, it has to have four right angles. It must have four right angles in order to be a rectangle. Okay. Next we have a rhombus. In order to be a rhombus, it's got to have four congruent sides. All four sides have to be the same length. Okay. We have a square next, and in order to be a square, it has to have four right angles and four congruent sides, right? Four right angles and four congruent sides. That's what makes a square. We have a kite. A kite has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. Two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, all right? So two pairs of congruent sides, and those sides have to be con uh, consecutive, meaning next to each other. You can't have the opposite sides congruent. It's got to have two pairs of consecutive sides congruent. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, then uh, we have a trapezoid. And in a trapezoid, exactly one pair of parallel sides is what you have in a uh, trapezoid. One pair, exactly one pair of parallel sides. Okay, so these are the different types of uh, four-sided figures that we have. All right, so the different types of quadrilaterals that we have. This is the list of them. All right, and so as you can see, each one has different definitions and characteristics, right? And as a matter of fact, as you can see rather quickly, um, some of these can also be classified as other quadrilaterals. In other words, a square is a rectangle. Why? because it has four right angles, and that's the definition for a rectangle. So if I pointed to this square and said, look at this rectangle, that would be correct. A rectangle is also a rhombus, because to be a rhombus, you've got to have four congruent sides. Well, a square has four congruent sides, so a square is a rhombus. A rectangle is a quadrilateral, because a rectangle has four sides. You see what I mean? A rectangle um, is also a parallelogram because the opposite sides are parallel, right? So um, as you can kind of see, these things kind of overlap each other, and many of these fit the definition of other four-sided figures as well. And sometimes you'll run into some questions, um, you know, that say, uh, you know, things like, is a square a parallelogram? And you got to figure out whether that's yes or no, or is a parallelogram a kite, and that sort of thing. All right, so what I've done is I've created a chart for you to look at that will uh, clear up those and it will be easy to look at to tell uh, which um, quadrilaterals kind of fit the definition of other quadrilaterals. All right, so here's my chart. Anything that's connected to something else with an up arrow is also that thing. Okay, so they're all connected to quadrilateral because all of these have four sides. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral. If it's connected to something above it, as long as it can get there through the up arrows, then it's also that thing. So a square is a quadrilateral. A kite is a quadrilateral. A rhombus is a quadrilateral. All right, so let's look at these one at a time. Okay, so a trapezoid is a quadrilateral, and that's really the only other category that it falls under. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral. Right? And a kite is a quadrilateral. 
Now a rectangle is a parallelogram and a quadrilateral. A rhombus is a kite, a quadrilateral, and a parallelogram. A square is everything except a trapezoid. All right. So this can kind of help you uh, keep straight which ones also fit the definition of other quadrilaterals. Now remember, it can't go down uh, the it can't go down the arrows. So like a statement that says all parallelograms are rectangles. No, all par all rectangles are parallelograms. Yes. All right. So that's kind of how you read the chart. Okay. Now the uh, next part of the lesson focuses specifically on the properties of a parallelogram. So here are the properties of a parallelogram. It's got four properties that we need to know. Okay, number one, in a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent. The opposite sides are congruent. So if the top side is 10, the bottom side has to be 10. If the left is six, the right has to be six. The opposite sides are congruent. That's the first property. Second property, opposite angles are congruent. So if this one is 60 degrees, the opposite one on the other side is 60 degrees. If this one is 120, the one on the opposite side is 120. The opposite angle is 120. Right? So the opposite angles are congruent. Here's the next one. The consecutive angles are supplementary. So opposite means across, but consecutive means they're next to each other. So the consecutive angles have to be supplementary. Supplementary means, of course, add up to 180. So 120 plus 60 adds up to 120, or excuse me, adds up to 180. These two, 60 plus 120, add up to 180. These two are consecutive. They add up to 180. These two are consecutive. They add up to 180. So any pairs of consecutive angles, they have to be supplementary. Okay, this is for a parallelogram, remember. And the diagonals bisect each other. So the diagonals cut each other in half. So if this diagonal is 5, this diagonal is 5. If this one's 8, this one's 8. The diagonals must bisect each other. Okay? So these are the four properties of parallelograms. And these are the four properties that we're going to use to set up and solve um, the problems that we're going to look at next. All right? So um, just to kind of uh, re-go over it to keep it straight in your mind, opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary, and the diagonals cut each other in half. Those are the four properties. All right, now, the question is going to say find x and y. And based on uh, the expressions that they've given to us, we can set up equations to solve for x and y. Let's see if we can solve for x first. All right, so I have this side, the left side of this parallelogram, okay, being 10x. Okay? Now, the other side is 80. But remember, the opposite sides in a parallelogram are uh, congruent. And I probably should have said in the directions, uh, find x and y in the parallelogram. Because for these properties to work, we have to know that these are parallelograms. So I'm telling you now, these are all parallelograms. All right. So the equation that I can create is this side equals the other side. So 10x equals to 80. Why? because the opposite sides are congruent. The opposite sides are congruent. 10x is equal to 80. So if I divide both sides by 10, then I can get the x pretty quickly. The x is equal to 8. Okay. Now, what about for the y? Well, uh, for this y, this angle is given to us as 5y. The opposite angle is given to us as 90. And that phrase should sound familiar, opposite angles, because in a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent. So that means that 5y equals to 90. They're equal. Opposite angles have to be the same. We'll divide by 5, and we'll see that the uh, y is equal to 18. And then there are your two answers. Okay. So it's all about using the properties to set up an equation that you can use to solve for the uh, answer that you need. All right. What about in the next one, though? Let's take a look at this. So we've given these two in terms of x and this one in terms of y. Let's take a look and focus on the x's first. So if I've got my x's here, take a look at these two angles. Now, what I need to decide is are these two angles opposite angles or consecutive angles? And that would tell me what property to use. So as I look at these two, they're not across from each other. The opposite angle to the 4x would be the blank one. The opposite angle to the 8x would be the 10y. Right? So they're not opposite, but they are consecutive. 
And remember, consecutive angles are supplementary, so they add up to 180. So the equation that I can write is 4x plus 8x is equal to 180. All right, that's the equation that we want. Okay, those two will add up to 180. It's just a matter of solving it now. 4x plus 8x is 12x equals to 180. I'm ready to divide it now by 12 by 12, and then my x is going to be equal to 15. What about the y now? Well, I can use these opposite angles, but I don't want to write 10y equals to 8x. I don't want an x and a y, two different letters in the same equation. But now that I know x is 15, I can plug it back here and do it times 8 and see what that angle is actually equal to. If I do 15 times 8, that's 120. So I know that angle is 120 degrees, and I know the opposite angles are congruent. So now I know 10y is equal to 120. And I divide both sides by 10. And I get the y is equal to 12. All right, so those are my two answers there. So again, remember, you never want to set up an equation with two different letters in it. But now that we know x is 15, plug 15 in for x. 8 times 15 is 120. So now you can set it equal to 120 instead of setting it equal to 8x. All right, and then that allows you to get the answer. OK, a couple more questions we want to look at here. So now, instead of giving me angles, they've given me parts of these diagonals here. Right? Well, there's only one property about the diagonals, and that's the diagonals bisect each other. They cut each other in half. And so uh, what that is going to mean is <coughs> that uh, since these two cut each other in half, then uh, what I'm going to uh, recognize here is that uh, these two are going to have to be the same. Right? These two are going to have to be the same. So 2x uh, is going to be equal to uh, 30. 2x is going to be equal to 30. And then I divide by 2, divide by 2. Then my x is going to be equal to uh, 15. And so um, we're also going to have what I should have left in the problem is one mark here as well, which signifies that these two sides are also going to be the same. So I'm going to have 5y is equal to 30 as well. Divide by 5 and 5. And then that's going to be y is equal to uh, 6. All right, so those are your two answers. OK? Uh, let's see here. What about the next one? Again, we're given angles in terms of x and y. And so uh, the opposite angles we know are congruent. So 4x equals to 2y. But what's the problem there? x and y in the same equation? Can't do that. Um, now, I can take this 4x. And it does have a relationship with this entire angle. Right, the entire angle. Well, the entire angle here um, would be uh, uh, consecutive, which means they would be supplementary. So what I need to do is I need to add 62 plus 54 to get that full angle is 116. All right, and once we do that, I know that 4x plus 116 is equal to 180. Why? Because the consecutive angles are supplementary. So we've got 4x is equal to 180 minus 116. 4x is equal to, let's see what that would be, 64. We can divide it by 4 now, by 4, and get our x is equal to, uh, let's see, that's going to be uh, 16. And I'm going to write that here because I still have to get y. All right. So I need a little space for that. Okay, so now for the y, we can actually do the uh, uh, take the same idea. We could set 2y plus 116 equals to 180, or we can actually um, get it even uh, simpler than that. I can now plug the 16 here. 16 times 4 uh, is going to be 64. And remember, the opposite angles are congruent. So I can just write 2y equals to 64 would probably be the simplest equation for me to write there. Instead of adding them up to 180, I can just put the 16 back in right here. 16 times 4 is going to be 64. So 2y is equal to 64. I'm ready to divide by 2. And so now uh, my y is equal to 32. And uh, we've got it. We're done.